Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. May 10th, 2024. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so I wanted to start today's video with prepping. Prepping, prepping, prepping. Because I really do think that we are heading for a massive, massive depression. So anyway, the, uh, the Duran recently, and the reason why I think that is, uh, well, the Duran was on recently and Alexander, he was talking about the Spanish Empire. Now what the Spanish did was they funded all of their uh, uh, world dominance. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, I, I never really think about the Spanish Empire. You know, you got the British Empire, the Roman Empire, but the Spanish Empire, and the, you know, the, the way they funded it was all of that silver and gold that they brought up from South America. And, uh, and that went on for years. They uh, went around the world conquering all kinds of nations, just like the United States has done. The difference was, is they funded their empire with real money. <laughs> so what the difference for us is, is we're funding ours out of just printing currency. How long do you think that's going to last? And right now, the uh, Russians are going to be hosting uh, Xi and uh, a bunch of world leaders in another BRICS meeting coming up within the next two weeks. I can't remember the exact date. So that's going to be huge. And you know what's going to be on the table? Ditching the dollar. Well, guess what? When the whole world no longer wants any dollars, you know, your pension fund could be worthless. Your 401k, the stock market's going to crash. Anyway, I'm just, that's it. I know I'm painting a bleak picture here, but I wanted to get into that before prepping. So what can you do to prepare? Well, the first thing is, I'm seeing that credit card debt is at a record high. <laughs> and the interest rates are at a record high. So if you're charging up your credit card because you can't afford to live, you got to make some decisions, man. I mean, I understand you may be wrapped into that 3.1% home mortgage, but it might be time. If you just can't afford that house, the taxes, for example, where you still got, you know, the, your mortgage payment, even though it's at 3.1%, <clears throat> is more than you can afford because the price of food's gone up 30%. Which, by the way, you understand inflation is a tax. So the Democrats are taxing the hell out of you. But, uh, and by devaluing the dollar, I guess they, they figure they're gonna pay off $35 trillion in debt. I don't think so. No way that debt gets paid. We're gonna have to default at some point or just inflate the money to where it's worthless. Uh, just like they did in Zimbabwe. Or even, uh, you know, I think Venezuela, Argentina. I mean, we've seen this, this story play out everywhere in the world but they didn't have the reserve currency well we got the reserve currency just for a little while longer it's moving away from being the reserve currency damn fast so silver is hovering between 26 dollars all the way up to 30 right now it's at 20 27 37 or tw yeah 27 30 or 28 at yeah, 28 37 somewhere around in there uh is it still a good purchase Yes. Did I buy some at 27? Uh, by 27 and some change. I think it was like 27, 22 or something like that. I bought some. Uh, I went down to about 26.50. So no, I didn't get it at the bottom. But you know, you want to say dollar cost averaging, you know, you're not going to get the best deal. I just like SD Bullion because their premiums. You know, I I trust Miles Franklin, and uh, I've dealt with Monax in the past. And then, of course, you've got JD Bullion. Uh, but when I go, I, I just haven't looked at uh, those other sites. But when I look at Miles Franklin, it's usually, you know, $3.99 above spot, let's say, for example, for Britannicas or something like that. Whereas at SD Bullion, you know, I picked them up $1.99 above spot. So, you know, that's, to, and plus you get free shipping if you buy more than $500 worth. Uh, I can't do that, but maybe once a year. Uh, so, you know, so my first homework assignment for you is get you some hard assets as your dollar devalues. You know, you got 30% inflation. Yeah, you might be earning 5% at the bank. And by the way, if you've got it in a bank account that's paying you 0.5%, you, <laughs> you need to move that damn money uh, to a bank that's at least going to pay you 3% on your checking account. I understand. I, that's about what I'm getting at Florida Credit Union is about 3%. 
which I understand is not all that great, but it's the liquidity. You know, you have to have a checking account, but that's uh, that's better than 0.5%. Uh, so then uh, the next thing is pay down your debt. You got to pay down your debt. Okay, and I understand if you're struggling and you've got to feed the kids, you got dogs and the vet bills are coming in, you know, maybe you think it's impossible to pay more than just that mortgage payment. I don't care if you can just slip an extra 50 bucks in there. We have got to get out of debt before this thing hole comes crashing down. So I pay a little bit extra when I don't have an emergency. Like I had a crown uh, on my teeth this month, so I wasn't able to put anything extra towards my debt. But, you know, at least I made the payments, thank God. Uh, anyway, so, but pay down your debt. That's the next thing. Next thing is prepping. You know, one of the things I hear advertised quite often are those tankless water heaters. Well, you know, that's all fine and dandy. It might save you some electricity, uh, but uh, it's not, I mean, a, a, a regular water heater, a 50 gallon water heater, uh, electric or gas, that's an emergency water supply. That's 50 gallons of water. If for some reason, you know, the, the stuff hits the fan and you can't get your tap water no more, or you know, of course, you, I'm sure you got a water filter, right? I've been pumping on that. You can get your backpack water filter, or you can get, there's all kinds of different uh, gravity water filters that you can use, or you can dump a mud puddle in there and the water that comes out on the other side is drinkable. But that's a lot of work, man. If you ever been backpacking and you got to pump your own water, it's a lot of work. I mean, that's a full-time job in and of itself. Just uh, just taking care of your water supply. Whereas at least with the water heater, you can just go in there, turn on the valve, and boom, you got water, 50 gallons. 50 gallons will last you a while. Hopefully, you know, when the stuff hits the fan, it won't last more than, you know, a few months. Maybe, you know, who knows? It could go on a year if we did an EMP. An EMP strike, you could be without power for a year. That's gonna be brutal. I can't even imagine being without power for a week, more or less a year. So that's the, the next thing. And then one of the things that you can do, you know, a lot of people go and they buy the, um, the gallons water jugs at, you know, Walmart or whatever, Costco or wherever you go. And that's a good emergency water supply, but that ain't going to last you very long. I, uh, and, and if you want a free route, what I do is, you know, I have a Brita, well, not a Brita, a Purolator water filter at home and whenever I use a, up a gallon of vinegar those vinegar jugs they're pretty damn sturdy you ever seen them plus you know they're sterile because it had vinegar in them you know I wash it out real good and then I use my purelator filter to fill up that vinegar jug with a gallon of water and then of course you know I put that in a closet and I let it sit for six months and then I bring it out and dump it through the water filter again and use it and then refill that jug but the, the vinegar jugs, I think, work best. Also, I want you to start putting together a jar supply. You know, whenever you go through a jar of, um, of um, jelly, for example, and I'm talking the bigger jars, not them little jars that you can buy at Publix or whatever, but a big jar of jelly, that's a good jar for, you know, putting, um, uh, well, canning, like canning food, more or less, except you're jarring the food. You know, you mix up, boil, boil some vinegar and uh, put some spices in there, cut you up some peppers, put them down in that jar, especially if you're growing your own like I am. You know, that's a, that, those peppers will last a year in that vinegar, you know, and they taste great. Man, I'm telling you. So start saving your jars. This is what they did during the Great Depression. Also think about, you know, other glass that you use. Like I get my grapefruit juice. Uh, I spend the extra money. It's expensive as hell. It's $5 just for a little jar of grapefruit juice. I save a few of those jars for putting stuff in. Because, you know, the jars will keep things a hell of a lot better. Uh, I'm always trying to think of things that I reuse. If I get a big bag from a grocery store, well, that's a trash bag. You know, why, why recycle that bag? Go ahead and use it as a trash bag. Save yourself money. Oh, Kirk, that's only two pennies. Well, two pennies is better than nothing at all. So I want you to start looking around the house. How can you reuse stuff? You know, you don't have to throw everything away. Now, hopefully you're recycling properly as best you can. I can't recycle glass here in Florida, so I always feel bad when I throw it away, but I have to. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for the first part of the video is the prepping angle. Of course, grow a garden. <laughs> you know, go look into a hydroponic garden. 
there's all kinds of stuff that people are out there talking about how you can grow vegetables on your porch or whatever you at least get something growing that's going to give you some food i planted a lemon tree here recently and i'll probably plant a lime tree so now eventually i'll have limes and lemons i got uh pineapple growing in my backyard it takes pineapple two years to mature well okay it's been in the ground a year so in another year i'm going to have enough pineapple to feed me for a long time and those jars will come in handy you cut that pineapple up put it down in those jars right so i have another assignment for you i want you to start looking around your house and get rid of one thing a day one thing i don't care it could be uh, like for me for example i just got rid of an old bicycle it's like departing with a with an old friend i hated getting rid of it but you know what it ended up in a great spot i gave it to the local bike shop and the guy there was a huge fan of the voodoo frame and so he's going to take that bike and refurbish it and give it to his nephew now the bike was 24 years old it was still a great bike but it needed needed new parts they're really hard to find on a 24 year old bike uh you know anyway so that's one thing i've got some old uh barrier that i used to use underneath the rock it's not very good i found a much better material and i bought it so all this work i did in the rock for for the last year I use that new barrier and the old barrier it's time for it to go i'm not going to use it for anything you know i thought about it i said well you know what i just don't have a use for it time to get rid of it you know uh the other thing i want you to start doing is stocking up on things let's see how many you know things of vinegar do you have you can get the 30 percent vinegar at uh at uh, ace hardware all right you know, don't, don't buy that store-bought vinegar. They're charging you way too much, and it's mostly water. Get you the 30%, or you can go to Amazon. You can buy the 45% vinegar, and then you can cut that vinegar and you know, use it for clean, use it for, for pickling, use it for... Uh, uh, vinegar has all kinds of uses, and, you know, one of the things you don't want to do is ever dump Clorox down your garbage disposal, for example. So you want to use vinegar. Of course, you can also buy these garbage disposal tablets. The other thing that I do for prepping, oh, that, well, that's the, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to look around the house and see if there's something that you've got to do, you know, before the stuff hits the fan. Imagine trying to buy a hot water heater when uh, the dollar is being hyperinflated. You know, you might end up paying $10,000 for a hot water heater, you know, because the dollar is pretty much worthless. So I want you to start thinking about things that you need to do around the house, replace that hot water heater if you haven't serviced your air conditioning unit in the last you should be doing that about every six months have them come in clean the outdoor thing you know have them look at everything make sure everything's still good uh what else uh, you got a leaky faucet you know that, that drip 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 is costing you a ton of money go ahead and replace it you know you've got that project where you want a, a wash tub in your laundry room you know, but you just haven't done it because you didn't want the hassle of doing it. You got a toilet that's just rocking back and forth. You know, or, or maybe you got one of them old toilets that sits down at your ankles when you sit on it. You know, go ahead and get you a new damn toilet and get it replaced. You know, if you've got the money, spend it now. Get that stuff done. The other thing is I keep a list of everything that I got to do around the house. And then I put a date on it. So, for example, right now I'm replacing a sprinkler. Because when I watered the grass last time, uh, one of my sprinklers was broke. I don't know how it got broke. I guess the yard crew must have hit it with the lawnmower. But uh, so I had to, I'm working on that right now. So every day I wake up and I say, what's one thing I can do around the house? What's one thing I can get rid of around the house? You know, the, the, other, the other thing is, you know, the day-to-day the, the -day stuff I know you got to do. You got to do laundry. You got to do the dishes. You got to trim the bushes. You know, all that stuff, I understand it takes time. But once you work your way through all the day-to-day -day stuff, washing the sheets, you know, all of that, and if you got it one day, just one day a week, devote to a project, a big project. Maybe it be painting the trim around the door, or painting the trim in the bathroom where the, you know, the, the water splashed up and the paint's chipped off, or uh, you know, put you in a, um, uh, one of the things that for security purposes, you can put a uh, mount a, um, it's called a uh, gun. It's for your door. 
to help people to not be able to kick in the front door. You can do a search on Amazon. I forget what it's called. Uh, tough, tough guard or something like that. All right, that's it. So just a prepping video, but I want you to start thinking about things. Get rid of things. And then the, the other thing I didn't finish up talking about the home was that, you know, it's sometimes in life when, when I was a much younger man, you know, one of the mistakes I made was always paying, you know, a thousand, thousand five hundred in rent. When I could have bought a trailer for thirty thousand dollars and lived in a trailer park. And then the rent for the trailer park was, to, at that time, it was two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Okay, I had thirty thousand dollars, and if I didn't, I could at least finance just ten thousand of it and put twenty thousand down. Then at least you own the trailer. I understand you're on somebody else's property if you're renting. You know, better yet would be to buy a little piece of, of land that, you know, that has uh, utilities, uh, accessible to utilities, put a trailer on it and live in that. And, you know, everything's paid for, you know, you just, but the problem with that, you're going to pay taxes on that land. But still, so you, so you cut your expenses way, way down and you have an asset. Okay, the trailer's going to devalue. I understand that. Houses are going to devalue. Wait, wait six months. Housing prices are going to be cut in half in most places in the country. They're already coming down. Commercial real estate's going through the, I mean, it's, it's the floor is dropped out underneath commercial real estate, which is going to cause some bank failures. You're going to see more and more bank failures. So just start getting ready, man. Do what you can. Think about things. And keep a list of, of dates. You know, when was the last time you washed your car? I bet you can't remember. I keep it in my spreadsheet. You know, car washed on this date. Uh, sheets changed. I try to do the sheets. I know once a month sounds gross, but I just do it once a month. When was the last time I changed the sheets? When was the last time I changed the water filter in my uh, purulator? You know, you can write it on the front. I just keep it in my spreadsheet. When was the last time that I, uh, I cleaned around the sprinklers? When was the last time that I cleaned out the gutters? When was the last time I power washed the house? When was the past, last time I power washed the birdcage? When was the last time I changed the oil in the car? I mean, so I, what I'm saying is every time you do something, you know, keep a little spreadsheet so that you can go in and you can look at it. And okay, you got the, you got the laundry done, you got the dishes done, you got the sheets washed, everything's done. Go onto your spreadsheet and say, you know what? Is there anything I haven't done for a while that I need to do right now? Oh man, I haven't really trimmed around them sprinklers for a long time or check the sprinklers, you know. Uh, just, I mean, just giving you an example, I know you probably don't have sprinklers. And if you don't, thank, thank the guides that you don't. I, I wish I didn't have sprinklers, but down here in Florida, like right now, we're in a drought. And I don't want my whole damn yard to die because the HOA will come after me. If, if I had my way, I'd pull up all the grass and just put down natural Florida foliage and just let it all grow in. But can't do that in an HOA. All right, that's it for this video. Peace out, stay free and start getting at least one thing done a week. One, one extra task beyond just the day-to-day -day stuff. Quit watching that damn boob tube all the time and dedicate some time. Just say, okay, tonight I'm gonna spend two hours on the finances, even though I don't need to. You might think of something. Like right now, I gotta put in the paperwork for my windows. You know, that's another thing. Think about, do you need to replace your windows? Now would be a good time. It took them two and a half years to replace the windows in my house. If you get started now, you might be able to tie into a cheap loan. They might offer you a construction loan if you can't afford the windows outright. And uh, definitely consider getting the coastal windows, the ones that are hurricane proof. Not only will it be a lot quieter in your house, it'll save you a ton of money on your utility bills. Which the last thing I, I did want to point out, the, uh, the solar panels are working out for me, uh, at least at this time of the year. My electric bill is, uh, you have to pay the service fee, which is $30 a month. So I'm paying $30 a month. It's an $83 lease on those solar panels. And so my, my electric bill has completely stabilized. So, and, it, and that the electric bill has been $30. And the beauty is, is that now, and that's charging my car every day. Because I'm driving the car around, you know, just about every day draining those batteries, which means I'm going about 44 miles a day. Okay, so, and that, that, that charging your car you know, these electric cars take a lot of damn electricity. And, and I'm also running the air conditioner. I put it down at 72. In Florida, I put it at 72 at night because it don't cost me anything. I can't burn enough electricity. I know it's just me in the house. But I mean, you know, when you're, when you're running your air conditioner, I just do that at night. Now, during the day, I pump it up to 80 because, you know, you don't want to you don't want to burn up your compressor. But I'm just saying, for example, you know, maybe that's something that you want to think about is, you know, how are you going to cut expenses? 
rather than buying that pickup truck, get you a Prius Prime. You can order them. Might take six months to get one in, but uh, if you're gonna get 90 miles to the gallon, that is when you're burning fuel, when you, you know, if you're not gonna charge it for your electric, just say thanks to think about. It. Start thinking about cutting expenses. Get those home improvements done. Get it done, man. Get it done.